let's start with the fertilizer prices and the fuel economy for the farmers when they are in the field for right now. Could you explain about that for the listeners? Well, first, thank you, Caesar, for having me on your show. Let me just tell you a little about about for Illinois Fertilizer and Chemical Association first, and then we'll talk about some prices and what's going on. IFCA started in 1965, and it was originally the Illinois Ammonia Association. Um, and then over the years, it has um, came with fertilizer, but also uh, chemicals or the crop production products that we use. Our main membership is the ag retailers in the state of Illinois that sell all the products that a farmer needs to put a crop in the ground. But we also represent the fertilizer manufacturers, the chemical manufacturers, the companies that build the equipment um, for sprayers and floaters and stuff like that. But we also represent the transporters <coughs> of anhydrous ammonia also. We're based in Bloomington and I've been the president uh, for the last couple of years, um, but I've been with IEFCA for since 2013. So that's just a little bit, a bit of background on IEFCA. So let's talk about fertilizer prices. Um, as your listeners, if, it, if they're farmers mm -hmm. know, we have seen fertilizer prices come down just a tad from the highs a couple of years ago. I think we're back at a more normal pricing um, or a tad higher than what normal pricing would be, but we're not at the record highs we were, you know, 18 months to 24 months ago on stuff, especially in the hydrous ammonia. Um, at the height, it was fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars $1,600 a ton. Now we're back in that $800 range um, right now. Um, if you look at your phosphates and potash, it also has come down from the highs. I think we're more in a normal trend. If there's anything that's higher, it's probably your phosphates just because of some of um, the supply issues. But I also say it's mostly because some of the river issues going on right now. Um, as your listeners know, the Mississippi River is not at all time record lows, but it's very, very low especially if you get in that Cairo, Memphis area, it's super low. Um, so that's driving some of that. And I would say two thirds of the pot at, or sorry, two thirds of the phosphates that come into Illinois, come up the Illinois river and the Mississippi river where about only a third of the potash actually is moved by water. Most of that's moved out of rail. Um, pretty much 90% of the potash that the United States uses or we use in Illinois is coming out of Canada. So we don't export a lot um, from far seas, but it's our neighbors to the north. On fertilizer prices, everybody ask what I think um, is going to happen with fertilizer prices. I think most of your dries are in, I would say, again, a normal pricing level. And hydrous, I think it all depends what goes on. And I always tell people this. I can tell you what the price is going to probably be in the next couple of days, couple couple weeks. But tell me what Russia does with the Ukraine war, because there's so much natural gas that is produced in Russia. And the building block for any nitrogen fertilizer, it doesn't matter if it's in hydrous ammonia, liquid 28%, or urea, it all starts with natural gas. And when the prices went up higher on a fertilizer a couple of years ago, it's got a direct correlation with natural gas. So you tell me what the price of natural gas is. I can pretty much tell you what um, that price of anhydrous or nitrogen is going to be. So the outlook I see is I think we're more at a level plane or level field or more sideways market. But if something happens with Russia on natural gas, then uh, you could see a tick up. It's pretty expensive for right now because of the world events. Yes, um, definitely because of world events. And I will tell you, half the soybeans in Illinois go down the river for export. But I will tell you, fertilizer is even more of a world market. 90% of the world's fertilizer is traded. Um, 
across, you know, uh, or country lines. So we are very much dependent on what the world market is. I would actually say, um, if your listeners are looking at world events, definitely keep your eye on the Russia Ukraine event. You also got to keep your eye on um, the Israel issue. I think that's more going to be doing with the dry fertilizers, not as much the ammonia as part of the world. But if you're really looking at in the nitrogen market, you need to keep a close eye on what Russia is doing. Association. Could you explain how to join in your organization or a fertilizer business owners? Yep. So again, we do have farmer members of IFCA, but again, the vast majority is the ag retailers. Anyone can join um, what we call our 1A membership is $60 a year. And that gives you information on what's going on in the fertilizer markets. Um, also, just regulatory events. We are a heavily... Um, our association works a lot on regulatory bins. The fertilizer industry and the chemical industry is literally regulated by 11 different federal agencies. So we try and keep up on all the regulatory events out there. I mean, one of the biggest issues that we're working on right now is the herbicide strategy that EPA um, put out there a couple of weeks ago, we actually put comments. So that's the type of stuff we do. But we also give farmers advance if they're actually storing in hydrous ammonia, what those new regulations might be or the updates on what's going on in the fertilizer industry. How much does it cost on inputs cost for this year? <laughs> I, I, right now, it's all depending. Like I said, we're seeing anhydrous ammonia at the retail level around $800 a ton. The dries um, are coming back to a more normal range. But, I mean, fertilizer definitely is one of the biggest costs of putting a crop in the ground, especially if it's on the corn crop. Huh? And, again, I think we're more in a place that we're back to more normal level pricing going into the 2024 crop right now. Again, Barring no major world events uh, coming up and happening again. I interviewed with Senator Chuck Grassley from Iowa about the farm bill that the prices of fertilizer issue with him. Could this be something to get done by Congress in Washington? So I don't know if it's actually in the farm bill that it gets taken care of. I know some of your listeners know about the uh, export duties that was put on phosphates coming in, a tariff, especially from Morocco. Uh -huh. um, they're looking at that, but the core of the Commerce Commission just ruled to bring down those tariffs. They were at 19 percent. They came down to 2 percent, but they actually raised the tariffs on some other countries. They actually raised it on on Russia. So I think the biggest conversation will be down in D.C. is what just actually happened about a week or so ago on the Commerce Commissions. What they could do in the Farm Bill is what uh, USDA is already kind of doing. They are looking to uh, increase uh, production of fertilizer here in the United States, and they have done that with some grants. But I will tell you, it. it to build a new fertilizer plant, you're looking at five years um, to build. I wish I could say, yep, you're going to have it up in six months to a year, and we're going to see the prices just change mm -hmm. overnight on fertilizer. But that is a long-term investment. The grants that some fertilizer grants to update products or uh, facilities is happening now, but it's it's going to be a longer term. Um, I know when we were or the last really large fertilizer manufacturer that got built um, literally took them about and I think if you're going to see a tick on any product it will probably be on phosphates just because it's so heavily reliant on the river um, what I tell people is if you have not talked to your retailer or your supplier right now you need to have it because 
with the barred stuff going on, it's getting tighter and tighter. I think probably 80% of the phosphates are where it needs to be in the bin or actually on the already in the field. But nobody is trying to build a huge supply of phosphates because they're how tight those those are, but also the transportation costs to get that up to where it needs to be. Used to be five, 10 years ago, it didn't matter what it was on fertilizer. To go from New Orleans to St. Louis, it was $10 a ton. Now we're talking more 20 to $25 a ton. So there's just an increased price on that. So um, have a good conversation with your with your suppliers, but the suppliers should be also reaching out to you to say what you ask, what your needs are. Are you thinking about putting it on the spring or are you thinking about still putting it on this fall? But if you have a good working relationship with that supplier, you can get ahead of that and see where those, some of the prices are. I think the further we go, at least in the fall application, the higher that price may go just because of transportation costs. I'm not saying it's going to raise two, $300 a ton, but I think just the more with this Illinois and Mississippi River issue, especially the Mississippi River, the higher that is going to get to be put in place. It might be a better bet to just wait to put that in the spring when those bins are, are will be refilled with dry fertilizer. Is there anything would you like to go to be telling our listeners how much does it cost on inputs cost for this year? I think the biggest one right now, what we tell people to keep an eye on again, and I'll kind of repeat myself, but watch the natural gas market. Um, pretty much every um, dollar natural gas rises, it adds about $32 to the price of a ton of ammonia. Um, so just keep your eye on that one. If you're going to not just watch the corn market, you know, watch that natural gas market because that's going to dictate a where that is. On a completely different subject, I want to tell your listeners, please keep your eye out on pesticide regulations. A lot of that stuff is going on right now. There's a big... Um, comment parent had just passed at IFCA, but all the commodity groups put comments on, on the herbicide strategy. And what this deals with is the Endangered Species Act. Um, very much northern Illinois is covered under Endangered Species Act. Oh. And I think that will directly affect how farmers um, plant crops in the future. I'm not going to say for the 24 crop, but I think you might see some of those regulations come out more in the 25 or the 26 crop. So be in tune to that. I think that could directly affect how farmers farm here in the state of Illinois. My pleasure that you joined the show for today. Thanks. KJ. No problem, Caesar. Thanks for having me and keep up the good work.